Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is the parable of the sign of Jonah. And uh, and I, my name's Matthew Robert Payne. I've written uh, 57 uh, Christian books under the name Matthew Robert Payne on Amazon. I've written uh, 850 articles that are found uh, on that are found on ezine articles ezine articles.com and i've got two and a half thousand videos on youtube and i'm doing all sorts of things soon uh, my books will be free in six months okay so this is a parable of the sign of jonah and uh, this is going to be one parable of 54 parables that will be found on a playlist on YouTube. I think I'm up to 39 now. So you can find 39 parables on, uh, on YouTube under a playlist called The Parables of Jesus Made Simple. And uh, in, a, in a month or so, you'll find the whole 54. I hope you enjoy this and, uh, and um, get something from it. We're just going to go to the text. I, I, I don't often go uh, to the text before the parable, uh, but I thought uh, I felt led to uh, uh, do this because it says some of the scribes and Pharisees answered saying, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. So they're answering something. And so I went before Eva, make the tree and it's, fruit good or else make the tree bad and the fruit bad for a tree is known by its fruit brood of vipers how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things but i say to you that for every idle word men may speak they will give an account of it in the day of judgment for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So the Pharisees probably felt offended by Jesus speaking to them like that, essentially saying, um, you, know, you accused me of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub. You're saying evil things about me, and if you do that, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And he went on to say, that um, only evil people speak bad things. And uh, so they come back at him and said, well, give us a sign that you've got the power to say something like that. That's essentially what they were saying. Then the Pharisees and scribes answered saying, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. So give us evidence that we need to listen to you. He'd just given them a sign, um, casting out a, a demon from a deaf and mute person was a messianic sign. Um, only the Messiah could do it. Um, people who uh, delivered demons uh, used to ask the demon what its name was and then cast it out by name. And a deaf and mute person can't tell you the name of the demon because they can't hear you and they can't speak. So Jesus had just given them a sign and they refused to accept the sign and so they've asked for another sign. Jesus firmly rebuked them. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign will be given to you. So he's doubling down on the fact that they're evil. Right? No sign will be given to them except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth which is where hell is. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. So Jesus is saying that um, if you're going after a sign, uh, you're not going to get one. Um, now, here's one of the conundrums with God, that uh, in Romans 1, uh, it, it says that uh, God uh, makes creation speak for him. 
Um, if, if you're looking for evidence of God, you can find evidence of God. But if, if you're trying to prove that there's a God, you're trying to get God to prove himself, he won't. God has got a good self-esteem and he knows who he is. And un unless you're honestly seeking truth, he's not going to prove to you who he is. Um, and that's just something about God. So he hasn't changed. There's people uh, all the time uh, asking for signs of God. I know uh, a, a story, I heard a story of an atheist. He went to an evangelistic meeting and um, the, the evangelist really challenged him. Um, he really liked the evangelist. He really liked the message. And it touched his heart and plucked his spirit enough for him to come out uh, the side, the, the, the back of the hall and say to God, God, I want to believe you're here. Please just give me a sign that you really exist. And then an angel appeared in the sky and winked at him and waved at him and flew off and disappeared. And the atheist became a powerful Christian. So um, God is not beyond revealing himself to people you remember when jesus was uh being uh, taken before the cross and pilate said he was seeking truth jesus said everyone who seeks truth will find it so jesus is the way the truth and the life and the holy spirit is the teacher and counselor and you can bet uh if someone is generally seeking truth and seeking to find god he'll find it but here's the pharisees weren't saying that the pharisees were saying give us a sign that you're something fantastic that we should listen to you jesus had already given them a sign he just cast a demon out of a deaf and mute person i challenge i challenge a modern day christian to do that and um so uh he'd already given a sign and i was saying well show us who you really are and um too many people fall for that trap trying to prove themselves and Jesus wasn't having any of it. And he said, I'll give you a sign. I'll disappear for three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, like Jonah disappeared in the fish. And when I come back, you'll know it's me. Well, when he came back, uh, many people become Christians and even some of the Pharisees, uh, if you know Jesus well, uh, gave their life to Jesus. Um, but um, by then he, he wasn't living. He wasn't doing what they wanted, but he did a magician's trick and came back from the dead. Um, it's interesting to note here that uh, the men of Nineveh, who, who weren't even Israelites, are going to uh, be in heaven and rise up at the judgment and, and condemn uh, the generation of Christ. Um, the Queen of the South, which was from a different religion, a different race, is going to be in heaven. Um, we, we never, we were never told that Nineveh uh, came to Christ. They may have repented for their actions, but um, we, we never found out the Queen of the South uh, actually became an Israelite and uh, believed in the Israel God. She just came to the wisdom of Solomon. They're interesting points uh, for another day. But um, now we live in we live in a modern generation that seeks after a sign. We, we also are in an evil and adulterous generation who seeks after signs. And witchcraft, uh, you, you want proof that the spiritual world exists. You only have to delve a little bit into witchcraft. Now, I don't suggest this, um, and I've never tampered with one, but anyone who touches a Ouija board and plays with a Ouija board um, a, a game that uh, people play with witchcraft and the occult. They know something supernatural is happening. So Satan is, is a person of signs and wonders and likes to show off his, uh, his skills and his abilities. Uh, magicians often tap into witchcraft and, uh, and amaze people and uh, do magic and, um, and uh, so Satan is a, a bit of a flashy uh, sign maker, but Jesus isn't. Jesus, Jesus is after a repentant heart. Now, in this generation, uh, seeing as uh, we're doing the parables here in this generation, in this generation, 
where uh, people who uh, commit spiritual adultery on Jesus were an adulterous uh, generation, having other lovers, and Jesus, Jesus isn't just our only lover. We flirt with the world and all the things of the world. So we're evil and we're an adulterous generation. So we're definitely this generation. Um, it says in scripture that just as the days of Noah, so shall it be uh, in the second coming of Christ. So we've become almost as evil as Noah's day, certainly killing a lot of babies and doing a lot of child sacrifice. We've become very evil. And uh, so in today's, uh, in today's society, uh, we, we should have the same sort of sign. Well, the same sort of sign is going to happen. But when the sign has been fully done, it'll be too late. And that's going to happen in Revelation 11. Um, it's described in Revelation 11. The two witnesses are going to preach on earth for three and a half years, the same time span that Jesus did. Enoch and Elijah are the two witnesses, I believe. Um, and I'm not going to enter into debate over that. It doesn't really matter who they are, but they're going to come down from heaven and they're going to prophesy and judge the world for three and a half years. Then they're going to be killed by um, Satan and they're going to lie in the streets and people are going to refuse and burial. And it says in Revelation that uh, people will exchange gifts and have parties uh, because the two prophets have died. They'll lie in the street dead for three and a half uh, days and there'll be cameras on them. People will be live streaming it. Then they're going to get up to their feet and ascend into heaven. And when they ascend into heaven, that'll be when Jesus is coming down to meet them in the air. The cameras will see Jesus in the air and that's the second coming. Well, when the second coming happens, um, it'll be too late. Everyone who's left on the earth who isn't saved and not obeying Jesus they'll be left behind. But by that time, it'll be too late. And that's what you do. You know, if, if you've got an adulterous wife and she's been warned and warned and warned and warned, there comes a time when judgment comes. There comes a time where you leave her and you leave her in a sin. And, and um, if, if you've read my books and if you actually make it through uh, the the um, playlist of parables of mine, or you actually make it through the parables of Jesus made simple, this book that this is going to become. If you don't repent and get your life together, you've been officially warned. And uh, I've got an anointing on my life and a calling on my life like the two witnesses, so I relate to them really well. And so the two witnesses are going to come to this world, preach to this world, do all sorts of judgments and plagues uh, by God and uh, bring the wrath of God down to the earth. They're going to be pretty convincing with signs and wonders. And if the world doesn't turn, they're going to be killed and three days they're going to raise from the dead and they're going to disappear. And when they disappear, it'll be the second coming. It'll be no more warnings. It'll be all over. And the seven bowls of wrath will come down on the earth. So that's what's going to happen. And um, so... You could say that I'm like an Elijah, that I've got the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of the two witnesses, and I'm, I'm warning people. I'm saying, hey, just because you say a sinner's prayer, just because you hold your hands up in worship, just because you feel the presence of Jesus, just because you speak in tongues or you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, does not mean you're going to heaven. You've been warned. You've got to live a lifestyle commensurate with with obedience you've, you've got to be known by your fruit like jesus said uh, wisdom is known by its children you've got to produce lasting fruit and you've you've got to um, do good works and uh, you've got to um, i'm not saying you're going to earn your salvation but you've got to prove your salvation you've got to prove that you're safe and you've got to really be a really bear sheep so this has got a modern context and uh, in your lifetime, if uh, you're not over 70 years of age, you should see the two witnesses. I hope uh, that this is uh, bringing you clarity. If, if you like this video, press like. If you didn't like this video, press thumbs down. Um, please uh, encourage me with a comment. Uh, if you feel uh, uh, that you want to subscribe to my channel, please subscribe. 
and uh, and uh, be encouraged. And I pray that uh, you can repent and change your ways. God bless.